Welcome back, everybody, for the question and answer session with uh, Jail and Zark. So if you missed the episode before this, it'll be right above Jail's head if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, it'll be the previous episode if you're listening to this on the podcast. And uh, make sure you click that link and go check it out. We talked about uh, the Banu Merchantman reveal and the 317.2 uh, sort of uh, reveals some 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 in depth discussions on things like the the impact of uh, and future things like the the nav mesh and such. But this is a question and answer session where I take questions. Where we take questions from the chat. Uh, I have a big list of questions, eighteen questions, which we're going to go through, and we're all going to answer them the best we can. If you want to join us live, make sure you join us live on Saturdays at three p.m. Pacific, six p.m. Eastern, um, here on Twitch.tv slash The Astro Pub, well, where we record these, and you can ask your questions there yourself. Um, make sure you, have, of course, you're following Jail on his YouTube, Twitter, and uh, you don't really do a lot of Twitch. You're mostly YouTube, though, right? Yeah, I, I never really got off with Twitch. So, um, and of course, you can join Zark, and uh, uh, he's mostly just a community member. Hangs out in my Discord, so <laughs> join him there. All right. So, first question comes from Paradox Music, who asks: Question: If Star Citizen had an in-game event for the Jian or Banu, what would you like to see? Start with you there, Jay, on this one. Uh, I think I'd like to see uh, an opening up of the consulate on Art Corp. Um, some missions related to that, and eventually it leading up to a Xena threat event with players being asked to defend or not defend that uh, that consulate. Nice. Okay. Uh, Zark. Okay, just so we have, I would second that, but I'll bring in something new. I would like to see a merchantman fleet coming in, some Banu. They land at Microtech, and then you can party hot. It's just drug, rolls, drug sex, rock and roll, and I am. So in, so excited, so interested and excited of how Banu really party. What what kind of crazy stuff will they bring out? Because we know if they party, they party hard. And I want to see what kind of crazy psychedelic effects the uh, the uh, character team will allow our characters to <laughs> get, and how you're completely unable to even walk straight anymore. And for the plot of this thing, yeah, I mean, you could do drug smuggling for the lawful side this time. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's more of a law focus than really action focus, to be honest. Um, I personally would like to see, like, especially with, like Banu, um, something along the lines of like the Banu, uh, smuggling. You know, or, or 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 even Jian smuggling, like getting involved with like a, like a Jian mission giver from the sanctioned criminal houses. Um, just because that's one of those aspects that a lot of people don't re remember is that the Jian have criminals who are sanctioned by the government. <laughs> They're from the smuggling house war, smuggling war between Jean and Banu in Pyro. There we go, something like that. <laughs> So some some sort of like meeting aspects of the, of the of the culture which you wouldn't normally meet would be kind of cool. Um, I but I think Zark's right. Like a, a party solely um, mm -hmm. just announcing that their Luminalia festival is going to be held on the ice lake outside New New Babbage. Bunch of uh, merchantmen landing, big party pavilion. Sounds like fun. Yeah, you like can buy, you too. can buy a cup a couple of slaves. Indentured. Indentured, indentured servants. Indentured servants, yeah. Um, you, can, uh, uh, you can you lifelong can, working contracts. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh yeah. Uh I think the other thing I would like to see is is stuff to deal with the Tavaran, but you need other you need other cities, like other systems. Like um the thing about the Tavaran is I have so little grasp on, um onto them. I mean even the character concepts we have from them are very mm. obscured for, with the armor and such. Yeah, I, I'm not sure we we have even one face of a Tavaran. 
You don't have any faces of a of a yep. Xi'an that's complete yet. I mean, yeah. everything that no. you've seen on concept of Xi'an is is no. really old and predates even the I, point when the even the point when they decided whether or not they'd have a shell. I mean, uh, I, I'm just talking concept image, images. I yeah. can't remember any concept image of a Tavaran face. We have Banu faces. We have Jean faces. We have Endul faces. Sure, they might have changed, but the impression is there. They, they have a few. There are yeah. a few. Yeah. There's a few. There's, there's a few that they've Tavaran, done. There's terms... nothing. Yeah, there are. There are a few. Yeah, there are a few Tavaran face concepts. Yeah, I mean, but as I say, they're so. Uh, yeah, they're so old that, like, like I say, it's it's like with the um, with the Xi'an stuff. Everything that you've seen about the Xi'an is predates the point where they'd even decided whether or not they're going to have a shell. Yeah, because we still uh, like that's the problem. Is that a lot of the early early concepts for the for the aliens are still yeah. very early. The only one that we really have confirmed is uh, uh, what is it? Is uh, the the, the Vanduul, and they've com- they've yeah. changed a lot too. So. Right. And the Banu. I mean, we see, we see yeah. non animated Banu, but that's true. If I have a shell, that's the question. Is I don't I don't even know if they've determined if they have a shell or not fully. No, Dijon about the shell, but I believe Dijon have a shell because, or oh, yeah. something shell like, because in Uriah Land they talked about having this scrub thing yeah. in the bathroom where they can. We'll see. We'll see what they, they come up with eventually because it, it was when they, when they gave us the last big drop of loads of their concept art, they said, it, it was said, we actually are still discussing that that point. Is it going to be part of their clothing or is it going to be part of their body? Mm-hmm. Anyway, should we move to that? We've got 18 questions. Yes, let's get through it. Uh, Deliner asks, with the rumored integration of small slash medium hangars into the Lagrange point stations and the pre- uh, presumably the port stations in 3, 3.17.2, um, do y'all hope that or, or think that Port Olisar will get replaced in either 3.17.2 or 3.18? She's really showing her age. Uh, probably not. There is no indication that we're going to see a replacement and CIG will not just abandon Port Olisar. They will not just do an unceremoniously change. They've already said that they don't want to do an unceremonious change. So, so. Port Olisar will go with the bang. Mm-hmm. And I can't think of anything that would be a bang. I mean, we have nine tails, they attack Orison, okay, it's it's fine, but they don't blow up a whole space station. That's yeah. more on the line with Xenofred coming in. Um, I mean, coming back to your conspiracy theory, <laughs> next year we defend the ambassador. No, we kill him. Okay, we killed him. Jean Fried comes in. Jean Fried is pissed. They nuke, they nuke Port Olisa. Players get pissed at Jean. Or we start the Cold War. That's how Port Olisa will be replaced. I don't think so, but we'll see. Um, let's move on. Fastcard asks, I don't believe this is the case, but do you think a legitimate argument can be made that the BMM is now too big? The word is, we I think that's an interesting... Go ahead, yeah, it's kind of an interesting question. I mean, I think that... You say it's the, it's the ultimate trader's ship. And mm-hmm. I think people mistake that to me. It's the ultimate hauler ship, which is really the whole series. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be too big for a lot of people. It's going to be, you know, if you just want to be moving goods from A to B, why are you hauling an entire shopping mall? If you just want to be exploring, why are you hauling an entire shopping mall? If you're not using those those features, it can't. It seems like it would be a really inefficient way to to travel. Um, I think it's great, great for some people, like a group of friends, for whom that is their big one ship. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it is going to be too big for a lot of people. Yeah, it's not a daily driver. But yeah. so, um, to quote my uh, philosophy professor, "Too big for what?" Um, <laughs> if you want to do daily driving, sure you can do it, but cuddles is probably the better deal. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a couple of friends, an organi- organization, if you're 10 people, you don't want a lot of hassle with multiple ships, you would just want to explore the worst. Okay, 
get your BMM, set up the shop so you can buy ammunition, drinks, whatever for zero USC. You got your replenishment station. Go land somewhere, explore, go back, fly up. Um, the thing is, the ship will not fly very agile. It's it will fly like a brick. Get a star ferro. Think it's ten times worse. That's probably the BMM. Sad as it is. We'll see. So I, I think it'll be a little bit more maneuverable than that, but it's still going to be a big ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. going to handle like a the big ship. Is, the thing is, if you want something swift and agile, don't yeah. get it. It's to be for you. If you are only two people, get something else if it's too big for you. If you don't want to hassle with an NPC crew, might take something else. There are great ships that are smaller like it, the Carrick, best example. But if you say, the Carrick might be a tiny bit too small for me. I want a, a bigger snap fighter. I want two Pisces. I want maybe a bigger rover. I want more cargo. Get to BMM. It's, it's, I don't think it's too big now. I think it, it might be too big for people who thought it was going to be the daily driver, but that's about it. Mm. I think it's gonna be more like a Polaris mm. in, uh, in its usability, yeah. but obviously with a very different purpose. Yeah. Yeah. The, the BMM is, you will fly somewhere, you will land, you will open it up, you let your embassies trade for you. And you just do what you want to do. You open the hangar, fly around, do stuff, come back. Two days later, leave. All right. The next question comes from Fastguard, who asks, Many back backers I know own a BMM. Given its popularity, once it's flight ready, how often do you think we will see one in game, um, both before launch and after? I think it's kind of coupled with a question that Fastguard asked earlier. I think or we kind of answered it already. Is that because it's no longer, it's not like a daily driver, it, it's really going to be a group ship. You will not see a Banu merchantman unless there's multiple people piloting it. And if you see someone who's piloting a BMM, they either have an extensive NPC crew or they're um, dumb and you can take it from them. <laughs> so I remember the time when a lot of people switched from the merchantman to the redeemer mm -hmm. and to this day i cannot understand why and i'm pretty sure a lot of those people might be kind of angry at this point because they had immersion man for 250 especially for the redeemer and now they have to pay 600 bucks um as for how, how often we'll see it i have no idea how many immersion mans are there we if we are i mean the if i remember correctly it's like 20% of the account base have the have spent the money that would would allow them to have a merchant man mm -hmm. so maybe 5% of the account base has a merchant man right now quite a few will get rid of it quite a few will never use it mm -hmm. um I say you won't. You will probably see it every now and then in a spaceport or in an outpost. But Stancia has its market open, broadcast through the system. Hey guys, I have something to trade. Go. Um, I can also see that a lot of um, people that really think, okay, I have an organization that is exploring, that is going in the frontier. And we have a merchant man, and this merchant man is just there so we can pick up whatever we find, store it, go back, and sell it. Um, but because personally, I think the merchant man will probably be a bit more interesting than the privateer, and it has more cargo space. So I guess that most large scale in organization trading um, might actually happen on board of a merchant man. I think if you um if if you imagine how frequently you currently see a hammerhead or a carrack in game that isn't just somebody you know taking one for a spin during um a free fly every time I and fly. then half that and then half that you'd probably yeah. be 
I mean, maybe even core to that. But that's probably how frequently you're going to see a, a, a Banu Merchantman actually playing. Yeah, especially since we probably won't even see the Banu Merchantman until after trading has been introduced and that kind of like trading from the Banu Merchantman perspective because they don't like to add new ships unless they have the features available for it. Um, to, so To be honest, I, I kind of see them bringing the player-to-player -player trading pretty much next year. They already have because player to player trading. It's it's just, the, the issue is more just NPC. money sending. Yeah, it's just money sending right now. Um, real player to player trading with the shop. I think um, they could probably do it right now, but they want to wait until the backend is swapped, so they don't have to redo it. Because a player putting some putting stock into some some place adjusting the um prices is just a ui thing mm. i can see them uh bring trading next year yeah i mean that's that's probably when they're going to be adding um uh the band immersion as well so all right let's move on to the next question we've got 14 questions to get through um sand grupper asks with the Banu being uh, such focused merchants and tree people, can I get my Banu merchantman trade table made out of made from real Banu? <laughs> yeah, the Banu aren't actually made of of tree. wood. Um, yeah. They're um, yeah, they did start off with this very kind of like woody aesthetic. Um, their ships are actually, um, and this may extend to some of their furniture. They use a sort of cell culture technique to grow. Um, they grow structures. It's not living when you actually see it, but they grow uh, probably a bone-like or wood-like substance that then is, um, uh, you know, processed in a way which is going to make it into these these rigid structures. Um, but that's that's probably what it's made of. Whether that is then is originally, and it may well be, but they might not remember if it if it was originally made from Banu bone cells, then actually the whole. Banu Defender could originally ha already have like a Banu bone hull on it. Uh, much simpler. How much can you pay? <laughs> That's a good question for the Banu. How much are you willing to pay? Um, I do like that I'm idea. I'm sure though. There's, there's someone who is willing to sell himself as a table. Um, though I do, I do there's like the idea. There's someone who's willing to pay for it. To pay, yeah. pay to be at the table. Uh, okay, that that's a different kink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's say the to party. <laughs> uh, hey, um, I, I do like the idea that like that that Banu ships are made out of chitin. That idea, the, yeah. the kind of the kind of concept, kind of cool. Uh, it reminds me of forty uh, k and the the El, the Eldari and their their wraithbone kind of structures. So, um, I'm really interested in how they bring in the customization. If, I hope they just go in and you see item port system from armor attachments, but for rooms. Yeah, the old room system that they used to talk about. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway. next. Moving on. Uh, question is from Del Ener, who asks, how many pyro crabs do you think can fit into Banu Min's merchant hole, hold? And will the Banu merchantman be a perfect ship for illicit animal trade? That's a good question. Oh, do you want them alive at the end of it? I assume yes. If you're going to be mm. if you're going to be doing illicit animal trade, I'm going to go for ten. I, I think we could fit ten. Yeah, because because the the pyro crabs are are about eighteen feet tall at the the approximation. So, and I imagine we could cook could, them before, so then we might get more in there. Well, yeah, but that's that that's the you probably want them alive so you can sell them to exotic zoos, you know. 50 50 some as food <laughs> some as i mean it, it, i mean if if we do this the right way then you get the queen you get mm. all her eggs so you can fit hundreds if not thousands inside there you go and the rest you well you butcher them and you sell them i think this might be a problem similar to when uh they were trying to bring um, turtles back from the Galapagos and they would tie them down on top of the ship but they were so tasty that they would they would, they'd realize that they had this fresh meat there and they go oh we'll just eat one and they were so tasty 
Or we'll just see another one. We could we can still get by with one. <laughs> so by with and one. It took, it took something like fifty years before one actually managed to make it back to London alive. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, so my orc, um, we kind of like to play with the idea of going hunting and selling exotic pets and stuff. So we are actually re- really excited about pet the pet system. What mm-hmm. can you tame? What can't you tame? Can you maybe have a hero crab as a pet, though you have to build an outpost of the fence or something? And on the other side, the food system. How yeah. will those animals impact food? And will there be some delicatess that gives special boosts or that allows special missions that increase your reputation, whatever? And especially considering with the luxur- luxury um, segment, like you have to have pie or crab meat on your 890 jump because the people are expecting it. So you have mm. to find someone that kills those things and brings you the meat. Yeah. All right. So let's, move, let's move on. Uh, Fast Card asks the ship spec matrix lists the Banu Merchantsman's minimum crew at as four and maximum of eight. How accurate do you think those numbers should be? Fairly accurate. Yeah. Um, because we know that there's like five, five seats in the, in the, in the, um, or Mondex. And the yeah. yeah. There's four. And then there's yeah. the, then there's the main turret in the back. So, yeah. and I imagine that the side turrets may also have their own thing. So about, about eight sounds about That's- right. The, so, someone, um, has, the, someone has pointed out in the chat that you do need at least four janitors for the sex bit. <laughs> at least four janitors yeah. for the sex bit. So um, the two seats behind the pilot and co-pilot are for the um, remote turrets. Mm-hmm. So you could argue that you want a fifth person so you can have the pilot, the co-pilot for the energy management, mm-hmm. two remote gunners, and one in the main turret. Yeah, and an engineer. If, in the in the engine room because we know there's an extensive. I room. argue the co-pilot might fit the might fit uh, as yeah, minimum. an engineer in the difference between minimum and maximum. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you go up, you have obviously a co-pilot and an engineer and mm, pretty and I don't think really much. Yeah. Okay. And you have your eight NPCs on board for the shops because you won't put a player in there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I can imagine there being five, five crew members plus an engineer. So six crew members plus two, at least two to run the shops. So, yeah. Um, all right. Next question comes from midnight black SC who asks, what kinds of laws do you think might exist in Banu or Xi'an space that would be alien to human society? Jail. I think this is probably for you. If you know any of these things. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that there'll be that outlandish um the xian are pretty keen on some environmental protection uh because they they dedicate whole worlds to specific purposes so it would just be completely inconceivable for you to go and um you know mess around on a world which has been designated as a breadbasket world um or um, to you know, fire weapons near the, such a, a sanctuary world or religion, you know, like their, their religious planet. But I don't think that that's surprising per se. Um, and the Banu, I think that they'll be. Um, I think the thing that they could lean into with Banu is having wildly varying taxation and um, and maybe um, you know what what goods are prohibited or, or allowed. Based on, you know, uh, really wildly different planet to planet to show that these are very different polities. Mm-hmm. But you know, they what can they really do other than sort of go, well, you can't, you know, oh, iron is banned here because you're not got an iron license from the planetary governor, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, making gameplay of that, it it has to be fun though. It has yeah. to be, you know. That, Otherwise, they you know they can do do law fluff, just saying, oh, the plumbus is is uh, banned here. But if, if that isn't something you can bring in your inventory, like it's just fluff. Yeah, uh, I can see the, the biggest one is probably the Banu trade stuff or G, uh, law. Their contract law is very different yeah. from, hum, from human contract law. Do not sign contracts with the Banu. 
that is probably also more fluff, or I can see that as being a mission chain where you end up working. You end up, uh, I always go back to the, the dude, where's my car reference from Skyrim where like there's a mission in Skyrim where you get drunk with somebody at a, at a random tavern and then you grew up. To, yeah. yeah. And you have to go back and figure out all of the, all of the stuff you've done. You like married a horse and a bunch of other things that you had to that, like kind of re- retrace your steps of this drunken night. I can imagine a, a, a mission giver where you end up doing, getting drunk and uh, signing a, a contract with a Banu. And then you have to do all of these different mission chains to get out of debt with the Banu Suli to, uh, <laughs> to, to be legitimate. I think, yeah. The work. I think that's going to be more more important. You know, this this may be thinking more reputationally. I think yeah. debt with Banu is going to be more of a, a theme. I think that time limits with Banu are going to be more of a theme. They like saying a very specific time periods on their contracts. Mm-hmm. And with the Shian, I think you'll have more sort of. It won't just be good and bad missions. It'll be very much sort of. Well, if you do a good mission for um, one one line, that might be considered a bad mission for another. The other and yeah. and having to manage your reputation far more carefully when it comes to who you're impressing and who you're pissing off by do it, by working for them. Mm-hmm. They're a lot more careful simple. when Gian. So sorry, go ahead, Zark. So very simple law by, uh, for the Banu. No exclusion in a sex pit and you have to be at least certain people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. I mean, but on the other side, um, I'll be honest. I, can't see of any law that would strike me as strange because let's be honest reality writes the stupidest laws Mm -hmm. and we get so much thrown onto us i hope that i i phrase it this way if the banu and john laws make sense then they are alien enough Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah yeah that's a good way of putting it uh all right, next question. I mean, Go ahead, sorry. I mean, just for reference, in Germany, you can escape the prison. If you don't harm anyone, it's not a crime. <laughs> um, there's, there was a law in America at one point where if you, uh, you're sentenced to death and if you don't, aren't killed by the, by the sentence, then in some cases you could be let free. Because you, you'd, they served the sentence and it didn't work, so you're free to go. Um, I don't remember if that's, I don't think that's a law anymore, but it's those sorts of things. So, um, all right. Gin and Tonic asks, do you, did you talk about the back to tanks in the BMM med bay? How long before they don't kill you if you don't get to get in them? Um, here's the important thing to actually take away from the, from the back to tanks, from, from the goo, the goo pits in, um, in the medical bay of the, of the Bane Immersion. They reference them as re- like, recuperation beds and they they said it's similar to the recuperation beds in the carrick so that's something i don't think they've ever talked about is having to have convalescence time with with repair like going to get your your medic getting getting fixed for like a tier three or tier two injury may require you some time like a timer where you have nothing to do you can't do anything or you'll have some limitation of limited ability until you've been convalescence and that time may speed up if you're in a recovery bed or something like that but i could see it as a bit of so i mean it will definitely be like med tier one or med tier two um when they bring this in um i could see it more like a relapse so Mm -hmm. if you just got healed your arm is now fixed and you go in you brawl it's a lot easier to injure it again mm-hmm. and you have another broken arm so if you go in um so you have to do some sort of re- recuperate uh, you have to relax for mm-hmm. so and so long and using the beds will increase it i could also see that those beds might actually be um that, that they split the healing injury and healing your health pool so that if just your health is damaged, so you're at ninety five percent or something. You go into recup, uh, you recup, uh, recuperation in the jelly. You go yeah. into the jelly, and if your arm is broken, you go into the med bay. I don't think that they're gonna have any different gameplay mechanics. I think they're just gonna look different, and that's fine by me. Um, yeah, you know, di- yeah, same mechanics, different UI. I'd yeah. be happy. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, we'll see what it has to do because, but I think that's the biggest thing about the back, those back to tanks is, is more of the referencing them as, as like recuperation or convalescence uh, beds. Mm. Like where you're, you're there to, it's like, as a, as a means, I, 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 it, it I may just, it may just be a uh, flavor. It may just be role play or it may end up having a, a, a contents in the future. So. I just want to inter interject because, uh, Janan, I don't push the release back by six months every time I say something. It's just, huh. if you add on, to, I mean, we all know how crazy the mechanics will be. Mm -hmm. So, it's already planned. It's nothing I make up and Chris decides, let's do this. No, he already has it mapped out. All right, let's move on to the next question. Um, oh no, we didn't. We didn't, answer, we didn't answer that. Jail, your thoughts on the on the back to tanks? Oh, as I said, no, that was that was my comment. I think they're going to be exactly the same as the med beds, just with mm -hmm. a more fun UI, and I'm okay. happy with that. All right. Next question comes from Mook, who asks, "Will the Boreal Stalker live in the Reclaimer Derelict on Microtech?" That'd be a good place to put them. Yeah, might be. Might be an interesting place. Uh, See, if you can get me annoyed about the Boreal Stalker, because I'm an, I'm an evolutionary biologist by training, mm -hmm. and the Boreal Stalker has a feature on its face which is so perfect for an alien, but it's not meant to be an alien. It's meant to be like a genetically modified human, uh, not yeah. human, you know, earth beast, you know, like polar bear mixed with, you know, some other stuff. And it's because it's, it's got four nostrils, and that's like completely inconceivable because we we do have four nostrils but two of them are inside mm -hmm. I, i'll be going off on a tangent all day if i start talking <laughs> yeah about but, but, like, but i mean that I should mean, be an alien not you know that they should use that design for an alien and then have a different design for okay, the okay. the thing it works because you know um 800 years in the future polar bears are dead so oh, no man. one knows anymore how they look like so the gene the, so they engineer it and I'm not sure if you have heard the uh, Mechanicum talking about how they recreate uh, ape and how their tails become become a weapon or something. Yeah, so they took the polar bear, bear who they never have seen, and thought, "Hmm, it looks cool." But I'm pretty sure it was supposed to have four nostrils. So let's make it four nostrils. No, no, branchial arch development. We're talking about stuff that is set down a billion years ago. Well, not a bit. Eh more like 700 million years ago that we evolved this and it's it's like no not gonna happen on an earth mammal no <laughs> that's 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 me that's me being like this is the area i can be like too pedantic about pedantic yeah about, yeah I, no, I love i love the burial stalker and i'd love it to live in a derelict reclaimer I'd, and you know, in the caves i'd love to yeah. see it i'd love to see it being like a terran um creature like a modifications of a terran creature because we have like the the kazi grazer so like yeah. take take it take a like a cute the effect the, the 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 classic like take a cute cuddly um ish looking kind of like a minor AI predator and turn it into an apex predator and so you just juiced it up so it went from being like a koala bear to being like a polar bear that's been on meth you long, don't need you know? to juice up koala meth bears. bear <laughs> yeah well that's what i'm saying yeah, meth meth up a don't koala, bear up a koala. no no don't <laughs> they, they are scary enough they are scary enough <laughs> i know Jail. Yeah, no, I was just, I was, I was sort of stretching as well. But yeah, I think, yeah, having it from a planet where everything has four nostrils, four external nostrils, mm -hmm. that make me very happy. Uh, hey, we make, make well, it might make sense. All right, next question comes from Delliner who asks: With the incoming derelicts, uh, reclaimer derelicts, uh, do you think that the certain, uh, do you think that reclaimer derelict could be a perfect replacement for the drug labs in JT two? Based on the leaks, the derelict looks like, like it has a lot more points of entry and nooks to hide in. There was a great comment that someone made on one of my Discord, on my Discord of a suggestion. It's on, it's on Spectrum. To change Jump Town from being an outpost to being a derelict 890. Which would then make sense to be calling it Jump Town because it was an 890 jump that they turned into uh, to a and to a, that and then then you also have to save the problems for like um entry points because it's got multiple entry points and it, it makes sense that it's it's got this large space and all that kind of stuff so yeah, yeah. Uh, it sounds like a good idea yeah 
So I like the idea. I like I like the idea of turning any any kind of those those event places, especially like drug labs, into uh, into derelicts because that makes sense. You it'd be harder to do these sorts of outposts because they'd be raided pretty easily. So. One thing I'm very curious about is, considering we get more derelicts, so all those derelict outposts we write we have right now kind of get obsolete. We have the colonial outpost. I'm interested in. Will they replace all the current outposts with the colonial ones? I think that there's still a place for the current ones as sort of first wave colonization of, you know, the prefab building that just got dropped off, the stuff that the pioneer might be building as well, before you get people really putting down roots and building the the colonial stuff. There'll be a place for it. I think there'll even still be a place for it on very developed worlds, when you get far away from the cities, but I agree, it's, it shouldn't be the main thing, and it, you know, once they can make things that look like they've been there longer. I mean, I kind of can see it on the moons, but yeah. on the planets, I don't really get. I don't really take it, especially since on a planet you don't necessarily need all those airlocks. Yeah. So there might be a. Uh, a simpler solution, a cheaper solution. You might only just need those. The door. You might still have those airlocks, though, if it's recently undergone terraforming, I suppose. But there aren't that many plants that recently mm. have had that. Yeah. And considering that, um, for Stanton at least, Microtech and Lowell, Lowell, there is the money to set some up something bigger. Because the outpost, I mean, even if you go for a mining outpost, there isn't that much going on. So you would want something larger, more lived in, where people are really working. Same for the, for the um, research facilities on Microtech. You want something larger that's actually working and not just one punny uh, prefab. Hmm. Next question comes from Mook, uh, who asks... Question: Low flyable sta- uh, skylines on uh, R Corp. Anyone? Maybe. Mm, yeah. I mean, the problem you're dealing with is uh, massive. Low flying on like Hurston makes sense because it's just empty space. But when you're low flying through uh, buildings, I, I imagine the the local authorities would not be happy with it. So. I don't think you're going to be able to do it too too uh, too often. Reenact the an, the um, Avenger Warlock trailer. There we go. Or the Cut, Cutlass Red trailer. I would definitely Cutlass do Blue, this. Sorry. At least uh, if it if it's possible to really go low, I would do it just to have done it. <laughs> All right. Mook asks: Nav mesh only for ground. Or will it also have air transportation landing, or is that a separate deliverance? Um, that's the concept, at least, from what the the uh, the leaks have said uh, from the um, the oh. uh, what is it the it's patch notes. They say that some parts of some missions dealing with the outpost, the derelict colonial outposts that they're adding, uh, will have possible. Uh, reinforcements so where they come come down and land and, and walk around that's possible but that's the, the, the eventual plan too you're gonna say something Zark? yeah it just so um enough mesh is i mean basically enough mesh enough mesh enough mesh itself would allow the embassies to walk up the ramp walk down the ramp mm-hmm. um even if the ramp is not 100% aligned with the ground, it would still be able for them to walk as long as they can physically walk. Mm. So the main thing should be more, can the embassies land without exploding? Yeah, that's most of the question. Can they? Can, no, the, can the, the players? <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> um. All right, the last question we have is from Midnight Black SC, who asks, do you think expandable and detachable saddlebags for the Mole and Prospector will come with the cargo refactor, or will they kick that down the road? Jail? I think, I think they'll kick it down the road. Um, 
I think it is definitely something they still are committing themselves to do. Um, but I think it's kicking down the road again. What do you it think? will come when our refinery comes online. Because before that, you don't need it. Why would you just touch the um, saddlebags? Why should they expand? But even then, they could do. They could just use like the refueling mechanics as a car, as a you know, a, a placeholder transfer mechanic, or as an optional transfer mechanic. Um, and then yeah, for transferring ore from one to the other, and say, oh, we'll do the saddlebag thing later. So. I don't know. I, I'm, I think it's going to be a while. I agree. I think it's going to be a while before they do that because the like we only really need it for the refinery and we're not going to see the refineries for a while. So, yeah. Yeah. I, All right. I actually don't, don't think that the re refinery is that far off because what what's missing is just uh, hashing out the refinery gameplay, mm -hmm. which at tier zero shouldn't be that massive um no but i mean the ship itself the ship itself is a small is a small one seater and mining is and it ties into mining and salvage so yeah but at the same time like think about like the how pro how how things are going to be progressing when you start with yeah. um you start with what we have now like like with 318 we're definitely not going to have it with 318 no just not needed. Uh, and then that team's probably going to continue on with seeing things like the cargo elevators and other things like that uh, and other things working out for 4.0 and Pyro. And then sometime after Pyro is released, it'll probably be released. That, that something like that will be worked on. But that will take probably yeah, three to six months. You're, so you're, 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 at the about... earliest you're looking at it is a year from now. And that's, that's not anytime soon. I mean, I mean, you have to think about which team works on on what. So yeah. for the cargo refractor, you don't need a gameplay team. At least not the whole one. Getting Pyro online, again, the gameplay team isn't necessary because it's server meshing and stuff. So it's more like, can they spare the resources from Squadron? Mm -hmm. Or do they have to fo focus on some special gameplay parts in Squadron? If not, then they might actually take time and hash out a T0 refinery system. And then it's just up to the ship team. We also got to and about the other things needed, like tractor beams. You need tractor beams to be able to move it back and forth. You need to have a uh, dock. You need to add the docking functionality to, to them. You need to have, there's other aspects to, other than just detaching the, the bag. It yeah, also has I other mean, aspects. So. They are working on the vehicle tractor beams. They are already working on them. Mm -hmm. Um, Detaching um, and attaching these saddlebags, that's more of an um, interesting thing. Could they use, because they kind of, they have to use the modularity system, so this might be the only blocking thing, which we might, which, yeah, we will see the, if we see the um, retaliator base coming in with the modularity, then we probably will see the refineries shortly after. Because I guess that the docking the saddlebags is the same as docking the module. Possibly. All right, y'all, that's the last question um, for the for the questions. Thank you all for joining us here today at the Astro Pub uh, with the, the, this. Make sure you are following Jail on his YouTube and uh, uh, Twitter. Uh, and follow, of course, Jail and myself at uh, Lower Citizen for our pod those podcasts. And, of course, you can join Zark and Memes with discussions on my Discord, which all should be linked in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. For the rest of you who are watching this live, thank you for coming and joining us, for asking your questions. And if you're watching this on YouTube, remember, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button, comment down below your own questions or your own thoughts on, our, on what we answered. And, of course, check that subscribe button. If you notice that it hasn't been clicked, you should click that button. And then you'll let know, you'll be known when these uh, go live. Uh, you go up as soon as they go up, uh, and of course join us here at twitch.tv slash theastropub when you get a chance to. Uh, and uh, yes, Fastcart is here in chat saying Banu Merchant Man. And with that, I think I'm going to end it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And, and like I say every time, hope to see you someday. 
the black.